Last time on Take One, we said goodbye to a few of our favorite anchors as the fall semester wrapped up and they graduated onto bigger and better things. On this week's episode, COVID protocols on campus, a sports update, and just for laughs, a crash course on cryptids and some UTP New Year's resolutions. These stories and more up next on Take One. Welcome to Take One. I'm Nathan Cutler. At Boise State, the spring 2022 semester is going to be very similar to what we all experienced in fall 2021. Masks are still required on campus in indoor spaces and in crowded outdoor spaces. Physical distancing is not required, but still encouraged. The university is still engaging in the same cleaning protocols to ensure that all spaces on campus are sanitized. And there's no food or drink allowed in in-person classrooms. Vaccines are encouraged, but Boise State are um, not requiring them. As new variants spread locally and throughout the world, please stay safe and wear your masks. Now over to you, Jenna. Thanks, Nathan. Welcome back from winter break. Here is a Broncos sports update. Boise State football was set to play Central Michigan in Tucson, Arizona in the Barstool Bowl on New Year's Eve. The team was planned to arrive on December 28th in preparation for their bowl game, but was unfortunately canceled on December 27th with the Broncos having to forfeit from a rise of COVID cases. Central Michigan then began their drive to El Paso, Texas, where they beat Washington State 24 to 21. Speaking of Washington State, the Boise State men's basketball team beat the Cougars 58 to 52 in Pullman just a few days before Christmas. The Broncos are currently ranked third in the Mountain West and have many conference games coming up in the next couple months. The men's and women's basketball teams, however, have been experiencing issues with COVID cases and have had to postpone several games. Stay healthy and as always, go Broncos. Now, Sky tells us all about the traffic boxes here in Boise. To find local art in Boise, you don't have to go to the Boise Art Museum. All you have to do is just take a drive around town. My name is Sky McGeehy and this is what to know about the Boise art scene. The program began in 2010 as a way to bring public arts to the streets, decrease graffiti, and increase the unique character of our city streets. There are currently 217 boxes in the collection, and they are comprised of a variety of different mediums, such as illustrations, paintings, digital arts, quilts, mosaics, and photographs. There's an interactive map to find all the traffic box art and other public artworks at boisearts.org slash explore slash map. Among all these boxes, you may recognize Boise State faculty and students' artwork. This piece on Curtis Road and Cassia Street is from Boise State faculty member Aaron Cunningham. Any local artists were able to apply with the Boise City Department of Arts and History. The department is not currently accepting applications, but may again in the future. To check out the open opportunities such as Tree Fort Music Fest Temporary Public Art, go to boiseartsandhistory.org slash opportunities. I'm Sky McGeehy, and that's what to know about Boise's traffic box art. The art around Boise is one of my favorite reasons about this city. Now over to you, Preston. Thanks, Jenna. It's a new year and a new me, but one thing has stayed the same. Activision Blizzard is still a god-awful company. After covering the toxic work culture, the pay and job disparities, and even the sexual assault that took place for decades, some of the abuse even leading to the suicide of one female employee, You'd think the well would have run dry, but you'd be mistaken. Let's turn our attention to the CEO, Bobby Kotick. Kotick is estimated to have a net worth of $600 million, all while Activision Blizzard regularly lays off hundreds of employees every single year, citing budget cuts. That, however, is not why we're talking about Kotick. It was revealed back in November that Kodak not only knew about the sexual assault and the harassment instances that went on in his company, he actively ignored them. Since then, there have been walkouts, protests, and even a petition with well over 35,000 signatures to date demanding the removal of Kodak. Nobody cares that Kodak has asked for his salary to be reduced to 60,000 a year. What the people want is for the man that had all the power to stop these absolute horror stories from ever happening, didn't. We just want him to finally pay for his failures as a CEO. It doesn't matter if you helped make a company a billion dollar dynasty if the roots of that success are as twisted and as toxic as Activision Blizzard's. Now, on a lighter note, let's see what antics they are up to over in the Spec Studio. Well, Grace, how was your holiday break? 
it was great. You know, got to hang out with my family and go skiing. Yeah. How about you? It was nice. I got to go to Hawaii, but it's not so fun Ooh. being in the cold now. No. No snow no either. Transition. No. 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 Well, because we don't talk about enough weird stuff on this show, let's talk about cryptids. Cryptids are creatures that have been claimed to exist, but there's no evidence to prove that they don't. They don't have to be supernatural or magical, and many of them we've all heard of before. Probably the most popular one is Bigfoot. This is a six to nine feet tall bipedal ape-like creature that lives, leaves massive footprints that can be as big as 24 inches long. There have been many sightings of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but most of them have all been debunked or deemed hoaxes. Then there's the Jersey Devil, which is most commonly described as a kangaroo-like creature with a head like a horse or goat, wings, hooves, claws, and a forked tail. It is reported to have a bone-piercing, blood-curdling scream. Most of the sightings of the Jersey Devil are that of small town folks way before the 21st century. All right, and the last cryptid we're gonna discuss today is Mothman. Just looking at these drawings makes me wanna go back to using a nightlight. Mothman is more of a humanoid owl than a moth and reportedly has 10 to 15 feet length wingspan and can fly at speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour. His most prominent feature is his glowing red eyes. His origin story involves him chasing down a car with some young adults inside in West Virginia. Some believe that Mothman is an omen, warning of destruction, or perhaps he brings violence and darkness with him. Well, if she gets to talk about creepy things, then I want to talk about Tinkerbell. There are some pretty interesting things about that little fairy. She first appeared in J.M. Barrie's 1904 play, Peter Pan, The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up. One moment she would be kind and helpful, and the next, mischievous and jealous. This was apparently because her body is too tiny to contain more than one emotion at a time. She communicated with the twinkling bell sound. In 2008, she got her first movie with Disney. Tinkerbell was born when a baby laughed for the first time. Then she was asked to pick her talent. This would decide her place in the fairy society. She decided to become a tinker, which is essentially a fixer of things or an inventor. Thus, she was named Tinkerbell. This implies that maybe her name is just Bell, and the tinker part is an adjective. I'm not exactly sure, but after that, she's gone on a bunch of adventures and met so many cool other fairies. It's also fun that she's not cute and bubbly all the time. She makes mistakes and gets angry, showing a range of emotions. And there we go, now we've established a balance. Grace talked about Mothman, and I brought the light back into the studio so that we don't have nightmares tonight. I might still have nightmares, though. Yeah. I don't know. Your story was I, a little scary. I might have to get a night light. Me yeah. too. Me too. Yeah. Well, let's spice it up and go to our Would You Rather segment. What's up and welcome to your first Would You Rather segment of the year. I'm Christy Amsitz and I'm here with special guest. My name is Carrie. And I've got a few Would You Rather questions for her. So your first question today is, would you rather listen to the same 10 songs for the rest of your life or have to watch the same five movies for the rest of your life? Um, probably the same five movies. I'm not a big movie person, so I'm less likely to watch movies, so I'm gonna do that one because I need variety with music. I listen to music all the time, so that's my answer. I'd go with movies. Yeah, I think I'd probably say the same. Uh, I grew up dancing, so I think I'd like go insane without music variety, so I'd have to agree. But our next question is, would you rather have to be in a romantic comedy movie with your enemies or a horror movie with your best friends? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, probably romantic comedy with my enemies because at least I get a good laugh. I just don't do scary things, not my vibe. So I'd go with rom-com. I think that's where I have to disagree with you. Um, I don't like horror movies either. Never seen one in my life, but I think it'd probably be more fun to be in a horror movie with my best friends. So maybe then you're laughing all the time. Anyways, that is our first Would You Rather segment of the year. I'm Christy Amstutz, and this was my special guest. Carrie. And now back to the spec. Okay, I'm really trying to figure out what I would decide, but would you rather be in a 
horror movie with your friends or a romantic comedy with your enemies? Mm, I would have to be in a horror movie with my friends. Really? Yeah, because being in anything with my enemies sounds much more horrifying. Okay, that's, so. that's a fair point. Yeah. I'm gonna go with, I think it'd be more fun to be in a rom-com with my enemies. Maybe not the like, romantic part, but just like, you could say mean things and say like offensive things, but it would just be like jokes. That was just like part like, of the ha -ha, plot. Like, ha comedy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's hear from Jordan. She's gonna tell us what all of the UTP students want different for this semester. Thanks, Madeline. As you can see, I'm tuning in a little bit differently today. I did in fact get COVID and honestly, it's been pretty rough. So be safe out there and be smart Broncos. Well, it's the start of another semester here in UTP. And can I just say, thank goodness Ryan Seeker is gone. Yeah, we ended up being good friends, but it's just so much quieter without him around the studio. Anyways. Here's a list of some of the things that our UTP students want different for this semester. Our program's New Year's resolutions. Okay, first one is, Kim comes to class. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that Jenna submitted that one. All right, next, I want to finally get Nathan's breakfast ramen recipe. I don't think that would be that hard. You probably just have to ask nicely, honestly. Someone wants to keep a better quote list of the chaotic and iconic things that people say throughout the semester. Ooh, that's the best goal so far. And we will definitely need to have a reading of the list at the end of the semester. That's a good one. Another resolution is someone wants to finally prove that UTP is a, co a cult. Oh, I don't even think you need to prove anything else. I mean, Nathan is the cult leader clearly and we are all his followers with a bunch of weird rituals and he uses us for his own labor for free labor i mean also don't get me started on the puppets but anyway all right one last one more nude scenes okay anyway um let's send it back to nathan 360 studio thanks jordan kids will do just about anything for views and followers these days a 14-year-old girl in Japan was arrested and sent to family court in late November. While hanging out with her friends in a chain department store, she decided to push a shopping cart off the fifth floor. Her friends filmed it from below. Later, the girls claim it was just for fun and she didn't intend to hurt anyone, but the cart narrowly missed hitting a male pedestrian. According to Osaka police, the cart weighed about 18 pounds and fell over 72 feet. This would have likely caused a death had someone been in the, directly in the path. The charge against the young woman is attempted murder. This is the latest of a rise in juvenile delinquency in Japan, most likely brought about by a desperate desire to go viral. Well, I don't think crime is a good way to uh, go viral, but that's all the time we have for today. Thanks to all the crew and writers for this episode. I'm Nathan Cutler. I'm Preston Fow. And I'm Jenna Vitamonti. Join us next time for episode 53. We'll see you next time on Take One.